Hi, my name is Lana Culp. I'm with the Department of Public Health in San Bernardino County. And today I'm here to talk with Dr. Erin Gustafson. She is the Acting Health Officer for San Bernardino County. We recently sent out a news release about the Hep A outbreak in our county. And so I just wanted to ask Dr. Gustafson some questions. I saw in the newsletter that we have 42 confirmed cases of Hep A in our county. Yes. So my question is, how come it's an outbreak? Because 42 doesn't really seem like a big number. So how come it's considered an outbreak? Well, the reason it is considered an outbreak is because it's above what we would normally expect to see. For example, in 2018, we only saw three cases of hepatitis A throughout the year. But since January 1st of 2019 until today, we've seen 42 cases, which is a large increase above what was expected. So we're going to take it back a little. What is sure. hepatitis A and how do you get it? Sure. Well, hep hepatitis A is a, a viral infection that affects the liver. It's usually it's a short-term illness that people recover from. There's no real treatment for it. There is a vaccine to prevent it, but it um, usually it doesn't cause long-term issues. The symptoms can include abdominal pain, yellowing of the skin or eyes, nausea, vomiting, sometimes um, dark-colored urine or light-colored stools. You get uh, this infection by touching anything that could have been contaminated with fecal matter. And then if people are not washing their hands and they may touch their face or eat food, that's um, the way that it is transmitted. Uh, one other cons uh, consideration is that we have not found any source of food, beverage, or medication. Sometimes this infection can be uh, transmitted through food, but in this case, um, we are not seeing that um, as a source of transmission. So it sounds like you could get it simply by not washing your hands. So it sounds like maybe anyone could get it, but is there a population that is more at risk or is everyone at risk? Unfortunately, we're seeing more of it in the homeless population and in those who use illicit drugs. They may not have access regularly to sanitation for hand washing facilities. Large risk in that population, but the risk is low in the general populations. But if you're if you have um, washing your hands regularly, you're practicing safe sex and um, you're not um, at, at great risk in this at this time. How are we as a department addressing this issue? We are doing a lot to respond to this issue. We are collaborating with a lot of partners. We've worked with the California Department of Public Health primarily, um, as well as very importantly working with the En-ROADS team who works with the homeless population and the Sheriff's Hope, Hope team who also works with that population, which has been very important in finding, finding the population at risk and um, being able to help prevent the spread of this, this virus. We also are working on facilitating vaccination in these high-risk populations. We're monitoring the outbreak with epidemiology to, to find out the risk factors and how we could reduce those, which is very important, and especially among the, the homeless and drug-using populations. So it sounds like there's a lot of stuff going on to address this, which is great yes. to hear. So. What can you tell the general public of what can they do to protect themselves? Sure. The most important way to prevent hepatitis A is to be vaccinated, to go to your healthcare provider and um, ask for the vaccination. But a lot of children may have already received it, but you will want to make sure if you're, if you're not sure that your child had the vaccine, it's always a good idea to confirm. It's not required for school entry, so they may, not have, may or may not have received it. The other very important way to prevent this virus is washing your hands with soap and water regularly. Cool. So it seems like washing your hands with soap and water is a very common way to prevent getting sick from any virus or any disease in general, right? So yes. we'll just try to remember to keep washing our hands with soap and water. Um, I know a lot of people may be wondering if you can't get yourself to warm water and soap, can you use hand sanitizer and is it effective? It is not as effective as hand washing with soap and water, especially the alcohol-based hand sanitizers are not as effective. Some of the non-alcohol, if you, if you absolutely don't have access to soap and water, you can use those that may, may, may help to, to kill the virus. So thank you, Dr. Gustafson, for that information. It was very helpful. And hopefully everyone that's watching has learned a lot more also. Um, if you'd like more information, please visit our website to learn more.